believe. We're live. We're live. Hello. It's Monday stream time. And today we're talking about audio. The audio daddy -o. Um what? <laughs> oh. Are you So are you are you holding your f microphone to your face when you're Yes. Okay. I might have to mess with the levels. We're trying things out. So my preamble today, I guess, is today I've been thinking about um just sort of the future for music and performing musicians and things like that like the landscape has been shifting we know that it's not the same as it was 20 30 40 years ago we know many things are more difficult certain things are easier to do and many things are more difficult to do there's more people in a smaller space almost and now that we are dealing with possibly long-term social distancing and isolation there'll be a different uh, paradigm for music and a lot of people are learning how to record themselves they're using basic stuff like acapella or audacity as we see in here which is a free audio program um, not the most advanced but we'll we'll get into some things that you can and can't do um, a lot of people are sort of interacting with sort of the digital side more earnestly or for the first time uh, myself included and I mean we're gonna go over some really basic concepts some EQ some compression we don't have a lot of uh, tracks recorded yet in this project so we'll keep it pretty basic probably just talk about um, a couple instruments um, but yeah these are these are good concepts to uh, to get a hold of and there's infinite amount of wisdom and knowledge out there I learned by watching YouTube videos and talking to people and I still suck but at least I have some experience so uh, today I'll be sort of guiding Laura through some initial uh, production techniques and we'll see how it goes hello hello do you want to want to say hi hello thank you for having me you're so welcome uh so you watched the i sent i sent you some videos as sort of like a primer to these concepts i mean did you have did it make sense to you do you have any questions just off the top regarding eq and compression how that works, what you use it for, et cetera. Um, I thought that the, the video you, you sent me for the equalizer made a lot of sense. I'm a very visual person. I am very, like, I, I have to listen to it. I have to hear the differences. Um, and I thought that the way they described it in that short video was, um, it was, I thought it was very well done, you know, showing the very basics. Um, the, com the compression compressor um, was a little bit harder to hear, uh, especially when they started going into attacks and releases mm -hmm. um, of notes. Uh, I, I had issues hearing it and still haven't exactly... I don't know exactly what I was supposed to be hearing, where I was supposed to be hearing it, whether if it was just like one note or if it's for an entire phrase when they highlighted the section. So I was trying to listen for it, but I was not successful <laughs> in hearing those. Um, there are lots of buttons. <laughs> and yeah. To, to I'm, I'm trying to make sure I'm thinking about the right the right plugins for for the ones that I'm talking about so the the equalizer the EQ um, if I remember correctly uh, 
I'm trying to think of where I'm I could pull it up and just find it again. Oh, you're just talking about where it is, like in the program. Yeah, I'm trying to remember what the what buttons that you can use for the the EQ versus the compressor, the compression. What is it called? Is do you call it compressor or com compression? The compressor is the thing that does the compressing. Okay. Yeah, I'm just I'm still very very new at it, and just just hearing that, I think I just have to dive in and and fiddle around. I think and see. Uh huh. Yeah, compression is, well, I mean, I guess definition-wise, so EQ has to do with, um, you know, you have your, you know, you look under on your on your track and it has mute solo and then like minus and plus in terms of volume. So you're adjusting the, the decibel level, right? The actual volume of the entire track. Um, and with EQ, yeah you're just adjusting the volume of specific frequencies or frequency ranges, which I think, you know, I mean, it can, it can be kind of a trip to think about. Um, but I, I, it is in a way sort of straightforward, but obviously there's a lot of, there's a lot of nuance to how you can use it in terms of compression. So the basic idea of compression, I mean, you can use it in a tonal way, like you can affect the way something sounds like not just like the waveform right we talked about like what the waveform does like if you have these big peaks you know these big transients that fall off really quick um and they're uneven uh, uneven attacks in terms of volume and so forth you can you can round everything out with compression you know you could sort of bring down the highs and sort of bring bring the highs and lows closer together so that it's a more consistent uh volume throughout uh but it there's kind of a number of ways in which you can shape that uh but we'll sort of get into that uh why don't we start let's start with uh eq since you found that a little to, to be a little more i i usually i mean one one concept that um, is not really apparent on <laughs> Audacity because like the workspace doesn't really it's not visually set up like that. But usually um, you'll think of your audio project as like a sort of chain, almost like an electrical circuit, and the most simple is like you have the audio from the track going straight to like the final output. So you didn't do anything to it. You just press play and then it's just the sound that you recorded. That's like the most simple circuit. And then all the plugins and stuff that you add in sort of the sound passes through those before it gets to the final, you know, output that you actually end up hearing. Um, although, that's not really, I mean, maybe there's a way to set up audacity like that, but I didn't, I used audacity like my first year or so when I was, um, recording my own things. And then I moved on as soon as I could, <laughs> but it, it does have some basic things. Like it does have some basic plugins that you can use. Um, so anyway, you know, I tend to start with EQ whenever I'm looking at a track, just cause I want to start with where my frequencies are at, where I want them to be, and before I add anything else on top of that. Although I'm not sure how Audacity, like, how it layers plugins, how it, it I don't know if it goes like, I'm gonna do EQ first, and then compression, and then reverb, how it does that, because there's no like, I don't know, there's no visual representation of that that chain that I, that I mentioned. But we'll start with EQ. Um, can you scroll yeah. down a little bit? Yes. And do you do you need a plug like do you have to download a plugin for EQ and <coughs> the compressor? Because so most so, I don't know if I did. Yeah, most um you've already used the um noise removal mm -hmm. plugin that's in Audacity. And actually I I 
I still use Audacity. I, I normally use Cubase just because I do. And Cubase is not super standard. I just happen to use it. Um, but I would still, I, I, even though I had Cubase and it had its own plugins, most most um, audio programs will have come with their own default plugins, and usually that's fine. Um, maybe you want a really specific sound, and you'll look for a different plugin. Uh, but usually the default ones are fine. But I found that um, in terms of the noise reduction and noise removal, I found that if I had a really noisy track, I would export it out of Cubase, import it into Audacity, use Audacity's noise reduction, and then put that back into Cubase. Um, just because I found that that noise reduction plugin worked better than the default Cubase one, although I could have always have downloaded another plugin into Cubase or whatever. But for, I those, for, for those who don't know what Cubase is, it's just another audio workstation. Okay. Um, so yeah, I mean the standards are like Logic, Pro Tools, um, you know. Uh, but there are other there are other ones out there that are okay. Um, so. Uh, yeah, so if you go to your effects and you go down, you'll see that there is a there is an equalizer. There should be. Is there? I see graphic EQ. Oh yeah, yeah. You can you can select that. Let me just see what that looks like. Oh. 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 Uh, click on a click on a track. Click on a track, just like. Uh, maybe a track. Yeah, just cl yeah, yeah. Oh, my. Oh, how fun. <laughs> is there another EQ? Because uh, in my default, uh, my default just says equalization. And I could change, I can adjust it to graphic if I want to. Um, the only other EQ that I'm seeing is this one. And I don't uh, know if that's uh, Try it. Let's see what it looks like. No. Oh, never mind. Oh, I see. Okay. Uh, yeah. So I guess you will be looking at graphic EQ for you today. <laughs> oh God. Um, <laughs> that wasn't at all what I saw in the uh, video. So. Yeah. yeah. This is like what you'll see, like if you have like you ever seen like videos or pictures of like those huge mixing consoles with all the like those like but faders that you can push up and down. This is kind of like the digital representation of that kind of thing. And if you hover over, you know, one of those knobs. Yeah, so that that basically just like uh, what can you go to the one over to it? Like to left or right, doesn't matter. And then one more. Okay, so I, it's about like not quite 100 hertz. They're they're kind of broken up unevenly. But you get sort of like a what is this like a 30 something band eq or something like that so it should it should still be the basic thing where it gives you control from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz okay um it's not as visual i guess because you can't usually on the other there's the other kind of eq where it's like a <clears throat> it's like a chart like a line a line chart where you it just like yeah. shows you what each uh what the frequencies are but this still gets you the basic cool. idea of like, you got your lows, low mids, mids, high mids, highs, etc. Um, but you can kind of see, and it's all level right now. Um, so you can go out of that. So what we have, let's let's why don't we focus on the the trumpets right now? So if you scroll down a little bit more in the project. There's three separate trumpet parts, right? Mm -hmm. And so they were all recorded by the same person on the same equipment. So I recorded these uh, a few days ago, all in the same room, all in the same equipment, same trumpet, same mouthpiece, same microphone, about the same distance from the microphone. And so what usually uh, I will try to do is you know you get this weird effect when you double things that have the same exact frequency information um it doesn't sound 
as blended as when you have two different players playing side by side, even if they're playing unison. So usually I'll try to switch things up, like I'll play on a different mouthpiece or I'll slightly switch around the, the microphone or whatever. But I didn't do that. I just did the same exact thing pretty much for all of these. So if you want to go and pick a part where they are all playing together, and you might want to actually turn down the uh, playback volume when you do that because it might be pretty loud. Okay. So just pick a part where all three trumpets are playing together. Okay. All together? All yeah. Together. All right. It's probably right there. Yeah, it's sure. Right time. Oh, jeez. Oh, and we're already redlining, so you're going to have to probably turn that down. Okay. Let me actually just mute this so we don't have the bass going. Okay. For the time being. Um, okay. So to turn that down, let me just drag this. Yeah. But well, we're going to actually have to change the... um the volume of the tracks because when they're all playing together it starts redlining oh but um we, we can uh, we can uh yeah just just cut them all like 3 db or something let's see if that's if that works and then we'll adjust more in a second I mean, it doesn't sound terrible when it's coming. Like, I mean, it's being streamed from your computer through to, to uh, like through Audacity to your computer through Zoom to me. So it's not going to sound exactly um, how you're hearing it. Mm -hmm. But it sounds okay. But um, there is, it's not quite as well blended as you know if that were being played by three different people. Um, now when you're when you're recording like you want to have a pretty consistent like your first line of defense is the way you record something you know that's like your microphone that you use and your microphone placement and things like that um and you could you could do a lot from there and generally like um like if you if you you know a lot of people are putting out little things these days where uh, they're playing together, like I said, men like I mentioned, uh, using acapella and things like that. And it's very, very obvious when people are in different rooms and using different recording equipment. Um, so on one hand, there's a certain consistency that you want there that in order to make one project sound more cohesive. Um, but in this case, um, it's the little variances, uh, the little, little you know, like slight differences in the sound of one instrument versus another that actually makes it uh, sound more cohesive so in some ways you want you want a consistency in the way things are recorded but in other ways like you know uh, this in, in a certain way you want it to, to not be so homogenous in order for it to actually come together so what we can do is um, we'll actually sort of carve out certain frequencies from each different instrument and the composite should be where it's like maybe you know we have the first trumpet we want that to sort of be in the foreground of the mix a little more so we'll take away mid high things from the other trumpets um, in order to make it stand out a little more but why don't we just go can you select uh, the trumpet one track and go into EQ so first thing that I would I would probably do is um, so I recorded these relatively close to the microphone um, I was maybe uh, six to ten inches away from the microphone uh, and the closer you are to 
the device you're using to record, the closer you are to the microphone, the more low end you'll tend to get. Um, and in general, it'll be like, you'll get, obviously you'll get less room, but that'll, that'll affect your EQ. If you're recording like multiple players playing at once in a band, uh, you want to get, you generally want to get the mics on those things as close as possible so you have more control. But if you're recording, say, a brass instrument, the sound isn't necessarily the best right in front of the bell. It kind of needs a little bit of room to develop. So having it just, you know, that six to six inches to, to 12 inches um, should be close enough to where you can get clarity and have some control, but far enough to where you can let the sound develop a little bit. But when you're that close, in general, um, you're not used to having a brass player playing directly in your ear, so there's going to be that kind of like lower end that's not super necessary in a in a in a track that has multiple instruments going on. Uh, your EQ is going to be highly dependent on the circumstances. So right now we only have we're only worried about three instruments. So, but we know we're going to add more later. There's going to be like a whole like chamber group kind of thing going on at this we're gonna add horns there's gonna be percussion there's gonna be vocals so <clears throat> with that in mind we're gonna we want to make a little more space in the overall mix so again the first thing i would do why don't we say anything below like 200 hertz let's just cut it out so completely yeah let's just see so, how that all right yeah, let's 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 yeah, yeah well 200 maybe like halfway or something like that i don't know what it goes to does it go to like 24 or something or 12 it's a great question actually can you can you put it all the way down and see what it does 20 why don't we cut 200 like i don't know 9 9 10 he doesn't like to <laughs> Yeah, that should be fine. And then everything else below that, just, just get rid of it. We're going to have, we have a bass guitar already. Um, we're going to have some low percussion. There's going to be French horn, you know, plenty of other things that um, we don't need that low end sort of getting in the way. Um, hit OK. You don't want to do preview? No, I think, I think the way it works is like, just hit OK. And then go go to the oh go to the equalizer again. I just want to see something. Yeah. Okay. So you sh you you should be able to go back and uh, mess with it uh, whenever you want. So yeah, get get out of that again. And can you just uh, solo the first trumpet and just listen to that one part? Okay. Did you want me to select the whole thing, or did you want me actually just select? this section oh you can do the whole thing it's fine okay but um just listen to that one part that we were listening to Can you go back to Equalizer? Oh, you have to select the audio. Let's do that section. Sure. Um, annoyingly, <laughs> so usually in in most uh, audio programs, there's um, with 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 Audacity. Unfortunately, you're kind of mixing blind. You have to make adjustments and then listen to it and then go back and undo or, you know, or make these little adjustments and then go back and listen versus um, say if I was working in Cubase and I was doing my EQ, I could play the track and mess with the uh, mess with the uh, knobs and stuff like in real time while while hearing the playback, which makes it a lot more convenient. Um, it's kind of hard to tell uh because i'm hearing it through your computer like uh can you go back and just sort of um 
just like zero everything back out. I know it's kind of a pain, but usually there's a there's a bypass option where you just kind of pretend that there is no EQ or the EQ it doesn't actually kick in. So you can listen to that. You can you can listen to with it with the EQ. You could bypass the EQ to hear it and kind of go back and forth and see if the changes you made were good, or or if you want to go back and uh, you know. Why don't we cut everything a hundred on down? By half or whole? Yeah, just everything. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, through through coming through uh, Zoom, it sounded a little too thin, which is which would be fine, honestly, with everything else going on. But let's just see this. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. So, so what, are you what are you listening for? So it's kind of like, you know, as uh, just like as like any like musician, you know, playing an instrument, you're listening for the color and the tone of your instrument. So I am. I, I'm trying not to change the sound of the trumpet too much like i don't want it to sound necessarily like the trumpet is right up on the microphone right up in your face i want it to feel slightly further away so that it sits a little bit differently in the mix so that's part of why you want to get rid of the low end because the low end kind of makes it feel like it's a little closer to you um but also like that those low frequencies i want to sort of save that space for other instruments where we want those qualities those those low frequency qualities like a bass guitar or a bass drum or something along those lines trumpet and things like that um we want to sit a little bit more in the context of other things like if it was just like one solo trumpet and i was doing like this like really like s like um smoky jazzy kind of sound like you know a little bit of low end and like sort of that sort of whispery if i want to have like that breathy sound like uh a little bit more like towards 6k plus um you could bring that out but in this case where it's like multiple brass instruments going on along with percussion along with the you know the bass guitar uh i'm gonna save that low end you know it doesn't need to sound like it's close to me. I don't need to have that in intimate trumpet sound. So I'm going to try to get rid of as much of that low end as possible without changing too much of the qual the characteristic of the trumpet sound. So does that make sense? Okay. I don't know. Mm -hmm. okay. So why don't we try that on all three of the trumpets? Just the exact same thing. Everything 100, 100 hertz down. Just Just cut it. Uh, do it on everything. Everything? Yeah. The, the whole track. You didn't make sure I had that. Yeah. And if we need to... Yeah, that's the same trumpet part. I know, I'd only been one second. Oh, okay, yeah. So. And, uh... Oh, okay. And obviously, so the way the way the ar the arrangement of this project is going to be, it's going to sort of grow in instrumentation, right? So as we add more instruments, we're going to have to think about um, how we balance the whole picture and what we want to stand out in each instrument and in the overall mix. Like, where do I want the trumpet to sit? Where do I want the bass to sit? Where do I want the French horn to sit? Um, and that's definitely something to think about even as you're doing this initial sort of thing like i guess we can consider this a sort of mix as you go thing where like as we're coming in we're sort of shaping the way it's going to sound even though we don't have everything recorded yet um, which is fine but this is sort of a combination of the mix as you go and also like just kind of going over some basics of production with what we have but obviously 
once we actually get everything in the sort of the what we're actually working with is going to change what you might want out of each instrument and then you'll have to make some adjustments there but for now we're just kind of going over these basics and we're trying to get this this three trumpets to blend together and then maybe we can move from there but since audacity takes longer than normal you know professional and uh digital audio workstations it's going to take longer anyway so we can just take more time to sort of talk about everything but why don't we just go ahead and listen to that same part with that and see if that really did anything. I mean, it's not going to make a big difference in terms of the blend, but, you know, go for it. I mean, does it? It might sound a little brighter, right? Does it? It sounds a little bit brighter. Um, I would say when you're all in, when it, like all three parts are in unison, it sounds more actually unison. I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah. With the change. Yeah, it's it's slight. <sighs> yeah. It yeah. I mean, you cut you cut all this information, but it still sounds like a trumpet, and in a way, you're 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 already sort of helping it clear up by a. Uh, by, uh, cutting out that low end because you know you are getting information in the in the low end from this instrument but that's not really like sort of like the characteristic frequency range that we're going after okay so now we can think about how to balance these three parts against each other now you can just you can just like do it with volume honestly like that's sort of like your first step like maybe I want to turn down the lower parts or maybe even the, the high part is too loud and I want to turn it down um, and actually uh, play that back again maybe we can see if um can, can you play just the first like Long note, ba ba ba, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Just, just play from where it's at. Where it was at. Yeah. I mean, it sounds like reasonably balanced, yeah, it right? Very, yeah, it does. <laughs> yeah. But we, so we don't need a, we don't need to make a big adjustment in terms of volume. Um, so. Now we can do some EQ to just kind of get things to blend together a little more and maybe sound a little more natural. Um, so why don't we do this? Let's go into Trumpet 2. Just select that track. Or actually, just highlight the um, when they all come together because it might it might sound a little different because there's a part where it's playing on its own so um like the yeah i guess you could just do that for now or no, no do, do, start from where you did and then go all the way to the end cool and then go into eq So when, when doing EQ, it can be helpful to sort of boost certain ranges that you want to bring out in different instruments. But I feel like maybe it's just the sort of philosophy that I've absorbed from <laughs> the, the YouTube videos I've watched. But I feel like the majority of what you want to do is to be sort of getting other things out of the way. Um, so if you want to bring out, you know... A little bit more of a brightness and like the three to six K range on a certain instrument instead of just boosting it on that instrument you could bring it down in other instruments that sort of have the same sort of that are occupying the same sort of space uh, frequency wise and that way if by by taking away instead of adding more you're giving yourself more space in the mix uh, to work with um, and I think it's a better way of thinking about sort of just like making it clearer so we want to 
make we want to make the other trumpets sound a little less forward a little less important so why don't we take let's see right around 3000 yeah just just duck that maybe like 3 db and then yeah and then what's the knob to the right of it uh, go ahead and do this actually no let's just let's yeah let's just keep it at um at 3k why don't you just preview that real quick actually you know it would be a better way to illustrate it why don't you um preview it at zero Now, now put that knob all the way down and then listen to that. It sounds muted. Yeah, it sounds muted. Um, it's going to sound less present. Even though like your meat and potatoes is kind of like around 1K, 800 to 1K, you know, the um, that higher range will, will you know, it's, it's almost like if you if you get c cut that out it's like you're putting your hand over it which you know if you're doing minus 20 it's it's a lot more obvious but just taking away like three you know maybe uh might be just enough to sort of take that out of the way a little bit without changing its characteristic too much or changing the volume too much but allowing something else to shine so why don't we why don't we put that back at minus three And go ahead and hit OK on that. And then let's go to. Actually, let's. Um, can you have. Oh, I forgot. Audacity doesn't let you solo multiple instruments, which is annoying. Um, why don't you just, you just mute. mute everything else. Yeah, mute the second trumpet. Or the third trumpet, I should say. And then play that chunk. And now you can even, uh, <laughs> I guess, go back and um, undo that. Uh, see if you can hear a difference. Play it. Play it. Go ahead and redo the uh, play one more time. It's incredibly subtle, but I feel like there is a slight, slight difference. I agree. There, there is a little less competition between the two parts. They sit, especially in the unison part. Is I think what I'm hearing, like trying to listen for. Actually, I don't know. Not necessarily the harmonies, but I feel like in unison, I can hear when it's. Um, when it's not, uh, I don't know. They just don't feel like they're attacking each other. <laughs> right. 
Um, now let's 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 tack, let's get to the uh, trumpet three. Do you want me to mute the other two? Uh, no, I don't think we need to. Let's okay. get in the, get in the equalizer on on the trumpet three track. Uh, yeah, let's keep let's keep that cut around three k, and let's see. Maybe we can even get rid of a little more. Um, Do you want to go left or right? Why don't we go to like 2K? Can you actually like put that like way up and then preview? Like all the way? Yeah. Or, yeah. I'm not, I'm not here. Is it having a hard time? Uh, hold on. <laughs> gonna take an hour <laughs> maybe let not. me let me okay let's see let's take two let's take two what is that two thousand right yeah <coughs> that's weird okay. maybe don't put it up all the way do like 12 like halfway or something yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Jesus. <laughs> it's interesting. Okay. Um. Well, I was going <laughs> to. Here, you know what? Hold on. Let me. I think it's starting to have a hard time because you have multiple plugins going now. Um, again, I don't know how Audacity does plugins. So. Not yeah, I think it's just talking about our time. Okay, never mind then. Uh, I was going to have you do that to sort of illustrate, like, another thing you can do. Um, like, I'm making choices based on, like, things that I've done before, uh, you know, and just kind of, like, some decisions based on experience. But sometimes you just kind of, like, maybe I want to see, like, is there a certain frequency that there's just something weird going on, uh, but I can't quite tell what it is. So I'm going to actually boost, you know, have a frequency boost and just kind of sweep through and see if I hear something that I don't like, and then I'll cut that. So why don't we just go ahead and assume that there is something weird around 2000 and, and, and take that out on the third trumpet part. Yeah, just to give it, just to give it a little, or not all the way, uh, just like three, three again. Okay, let's see here what it is. Yeah, you don't, you don't need a preview, just, just, yeah. just do it. That's great. I hope it doesn't like make a new plugin every time you, <laughs> you hit okay, and then it just like how do you, how do eats you all your CPU. You I have no idea, and Audacity, I have no clue. you listen to uh, all of them in that one that one section sure. let's see how they uh 
how they play together. Starting from where I was just playing. Uh, no, you can go to um. Oh, geez. That's what I'm saying. Hold on. I just saw something on your. Uh, I'm just looking at my. I have I have Audacity open right now. I'm just taking a look. Okay. Mm -hmm. Anyway. Yeah, that 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 part we we were listening to before. The dotted eight sixteen. <laughs> How's that? Hmm. I don't know if now because you made the second trumpet slightly like I don't want to say softer, but in more of the background, uh -huh. it, it almost feels like the third trumpet is now more in the foreground. But I need to listen to it one more time to see if that is what I'm hearing. it one more time mm -hmm. maybe so would you rather it be like a little more like first then second then third mm, I'm not opposed to any one way so this is I'm just ex this is a nice kind of experiment to see how the, all this sounds. So, um, okay. Well, what do you think? Is there something you want to take? Is there is there some way in which you want the third trumpet to be even more, you know, out of the way? I would like it to maybe be equal with second. Okay, why don't you mute the first trumpet and let's just listen to that. Okay. The second and third trumpets. Play it back again. All right, let's go into the let's go into the third trumpet. Actually, let me see. What does Audacity have? So you're on your Audacity. Screen. Yeah, I'm just kind of. I'm just taking a look at what it's got. Low pass, spectral edit, parametric. these high pass filters and low pass filters yeah that's just um so basically a high pass filter you use when you want to cut low stuff and a low pass filter when you want to cut high stuff so the high pass the high stuff gets through low pass the low stuff gets through got it basically um but usually there's um there's there'll be like a way to actually see which frequencies are uh coming out in a track. But I don't know if Audacity has that. I mean I have the spectrogram, but I have no idea how to read this. What <laughs> Edit 
Oh, I see. Yeah, I've never read a track like this before. Hold on. Spectrogram settings. Zero, I'll go to like 12. Or not 120,000. Okay. to see the weird time of it starting. I'm just clicking on, um, if you go to where it says, say, Trumpet 2, mm -hmm. and you click on that arrow, you can go down to Spectrogram. Oh, interesting. And now it's okay, giving this I've crazy this view. Before. I've actually read these before in, <laughs> in Mish, in which class was it? Some music theory class. We started reading these. Oh, really? I uh -huh. like, I've looked at like, um, spectrograms, like not necessarily this kind, but like where it's kind of like a frequency readout or whatever. Um, but not one that looked like this. So I'm like, uh, how do I interpret this? I think I, I kind of get it. I mean, wouldn't the lower, bar, like the lower bars be like the, the lower frequencies and these are the higher frequencies? Yeah. But what are the, co what's the color? Hmm. Let's see. Cooler versus warmer tones, potentially. <sighs> I don't know about that. Yeah. I think it's it's their, their it must be their, their def decibel level. So louder is probably more red. Um, it's where the meat is. The meat, yeah. And then, like, because if you look at the left, there's all of this, like, um, faint, it, faint blue. And that could just be white noise that that's being heard. Most likely, Extra yeah. Noise. So that's probably what's in here as well. I can play it and see. I mean, I'm gonna play it. So it looks like. So it's interesting because you can kind of see the notes as they're passing through. Uh huh. Mm. Here's what I'm gonna I say. Okay. Try try actually cutting from second trumpet around 800. Uh, with the EQ. EQ. Yeah, like three. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that looks funky. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, around uh, 800. Yeah. Just cut like three. Do you want me to keep everything else the way it is? Uh, keep a uh, 2K at zero. And then okay. 3K, you can keep that where it is. Okay, should I try previewing it? No, yeah, nah, no, no, no time for that. And then turn it up like two or three db like zero out the volume again let's see and then play it with trumpet three oh i have that i don't know it was all unmuted for some reason <laughs> i started hearing my click track that i created Want me to move the trumpet three back to zero, or do you want to keep this one? Do you want to keep it where it is? Keep it where it is. Uh, hold on, I got distracted by. Um, no, I'm not. No, I'm looking at my own live stream. <laughs> Make it big. Yep. 
I had I've been trying to figure this out. Well, now I know. I want to keep it right there. Okay, that, if you want. That would be awesome. Okay, I'm going to do that for this group. Well, I don't know if that exactly yeah, helps. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think that actually helps. I'll figure that out later. All right. Okay. But yeah, play play them again. How does that sound? I think that sounds more balanced. I would like to hear it with all three, just so Go I Go for it. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, because it is getting a little hot, can we bring... Uh, the other trumpet's down to minus six and trumpet two down to minus three. Minus three and then which one to minus six? Trumpet the other one? two. The other two, yeah. Because we still need to add it. We're going to have to probably even take out more uh, once we add the other instruments because it's already getting pretty hot. How's that? Let me, hear, let me hear one more time. Hang sure. On. It's funny because it just feels like the third trumpet, and maybe like first and second blend so nicely. I feel like third fits with that. Maybe that's just for me. It just I, it just feels that way. I I don't. I'm not Is hearing that. that. For you? No. Really? Okay. Play one more time. Oh, I see what you mean. In that chord? Yeah. But everything else seems okay. Can you solo can you solo the third trumpet? Go back to EQ on third trumpet. Um, go to six thousand. Take that down a notch. Three, three deeps, three deeps, and let's see about that. All right, put it in context. Let's go back, EQ. I'm just, just tearing it apart. I'm just like, I'm trying to figure out what I'm hearing. Can we just like turn it really down just to see what I'm listening for? Uh, go back to 2K, 3K, 2K, is that? Oh, that's not really down, is it? Actually, um, I forget which one we were taking 2K from. I think oh, it was third trumpet. Too. Yeah, put 2K down to six, down six. Okay. 
and then try it. Yeah, six point nine is that okay? That's fine. Okay, just uh, solo it. Uh, sure. sound weird or anything let me hear it in context yeah usually um when you're making a lot of changes and you're trying to chase a solution it's good idea to sort of like take a step back and see if what you're doing is actually doing anything but for me <laughs> just personally i'm like trying to sit here and deal with audacity i'm like oh god but <laughs> What do you think? It doesn't stick out to me as much now. But does it still feel out of balance or? I don't know if it's just because the first and second, just like, I guess maybe the chord just for some reason, it just sounds like a chord and just not like two separate. Turn it, turn it down another three dB just in volume and then see. better it might have just been was that. just too loud <laughs> maybe yeah sometimes it is actually just too loud but um, then what um what if we added back all of the eq stuff well it would it would stand out a little more okay do you want i mean it depends play it one more time Go back to the beginning of that slow section where they all are playing. Uh, the very beginning of that section? Yeah. the second trumpet being like almost stuffier in does it feel stuffy like this makes it that's that part makes it sound like it's a midi file do you hear that uh, it's hard to tell when it's coming through your you know because i'm not listening to the actual source Okay, um, it sounds like it's a MIDI file now. <laughs> At least just that section that Alright. In this case, um nice. if I want them to sound different, then I'm I'll try to make sure that they're EQ'd differently enough so why don't we select um starting there all the way to the end on the second trumpet part and go into the eq and let's try and remember what we did because this wasn't so that should be zeroed 6k should be zeroed and that should be it, right? So it's taking out three and eight. I think so. Okay, so that's fine. 
Now go to third trumpet. Interesting. So it seems like it's saving. I think it's just like showing you what it, what it did before. Actually, you know what? You're right. I think it saves the settings the last time you did it, but it literally applies the EQ new every time. Hmm. I think. So I don't know if that means that even if you zero it out, your audio is actually different. That would be interesting. <laughs> We could we could sit here and uh, we've already been streaming for like an hour. Yeah, almost. I haven't even gotten to compression. We could do that on another day. Yeah, why not? Well, yeah. Because we'll have more stuff hopefully. Yeah. Uh, just don't worry about that. Okay. Cool. I just uh, I wanted to see what that was. Yeah. Okay. So wait 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 wait. Okay. So zero out eight hundred right? Or w was that? Was 800 the third trumpet or the second I trumpet? I remember. Uh, zero that out. Okay. Uh, then 2K. Actually, I want to go to 1K. Or, nah, it's too close to 1.5 maybe? 1.5 or 2? What's, what's next that was? Yeah, yeah, 1.6. Why don't we do that? Um... Cut that like three or even six. Let's go six. Let's go. Let's go crazy. And then three was at minus three, right? And then let's do six K at minus three. And let's try that. See if that did anything. Do you want me to mute, mute the sec second trumpet? No. To me, that sounds a little better. So I'll have, I'll have to take some time and find out if what Audacity is doing is literally applying those EQ settings every time. So it's like every time you hit OK, it's taking another 3 dB away from, you know, 2K uh, hertz. Uh, that'd be nice to know. But yeah, so what we're trying to do in terms of blending, cause the reason it's, you said it sounded like MIDI, it's kind of artificial, was that thing I was talking about before. When you have the exact same sound playing over itself, it sounds, it doesn't sound natural. Because obviously, you know, one player can't necessarily play those two parts by themselves. You know, the blend that we get is actually from the variations uh, in between two players or two different pieces of equipment or whatever. So generally, if I'm recording a lot of, like, trumpet stuff, I've recorded stuff where it's like four trumpets and I'm the same trumpet player using the same microphone in the same room, but I will use a, either different instruments entirely like a B flat trumpet versus a C trumpet, or I have different B flats or whatever, or I'll use different mouthpieces, or I'll try to slightly different microphone position in order to bring out different f uh, characteristics, different frequencies to make it sound a little more natural, like as if four different trumpet players were playing together versus me dubbing parts over and over. So in this case, what we're doing is I'm trying to make sure that like, yes, I'm taking things away. I was trying to clear things up for the first trumpet initially, but in order to get trumpets two and three to blend in a way that doesn't make it seem artificial I want to take away different parts so that those frequencies can then be sort of filled in by the other part and make it sound a little more natural and blend a little more versus having an artificial sound and the decisions that I'm making are just just sort of guesses educated ba guesses based on things that I've tried before um, things that I sort of have know a little bit about in terms of what different things uh what different frequency ranges what their different characteristics are and what i might want out of the instrument so yeah um any questions no 
You got it. No. You're ready to mix a whole track by yourself. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, I mean, at this point, you know, you can just sort of mess with it. You know, you, that's how you learn. Like, I'm just, this is like when I took a, my theory classes and then the professor would be talking about something and you're like, oh, cool. Yeah, I get it. And then they give you like homework, like practice or a test. And like, you're like, what the, f what is this? I have no idea what I'm doing. Um, you kind of just have to do it and figure it out. But knowing these, these, these um, concepts of using EQ, just to sort of clear the picture and to get everything to sit well together. Um, trying a more subtractive approach in order to clear things up and uh, just a sort of basic sense of like what's what you want out of each frequency range um, and that's obviously going to sort of vary based on instrument types like basses or you know like horns vocals cymbals you know they're all going to kind of generally occupy mainly different uh, frequency ranges but also they have they have a full spectrum of sound um, and that you might want to tinker like just because uh, it's a bass drum doesn't mean I don't want anything on the high end maybe I want a little bit of attack on that high end like 6k up depending on what the context is but right now we're just focused on making these three things which the way it was recorded doesn't make it sit super well together i mean initially like if again if we were using a different audio program it would be easy enough to just you know bypass the compressor so you could hear the difference between what it sounded like when we first started like an hour ago and then what it sounds like now with the uh changes because sometimes you know you get caught forget. yeah you get you gotta forget and you think you're making big progress and then you go back and you undo what you just did and you listen to it and you're like, I don't think I actually made this sound better. So that that's one of the drawbacks of this program. I mean, maybe these things that I'm talking about are available and I just haven't spent time to figure it out. Again, I used Audacity at the very beginning of my, you know, production life, I guess. Um, so maybe there's more to it than I discovered. But yeah, but I mean, even though it's a little more difficult and a little uh less convenient you can still do these things to make your track sound better sound a little more professional because i hear people uh you know even people who have like really well edited like youtube videos you know if they're all playing the same parts by themselves or if they're playing multiple parts on the same instrument like say as a trumpet player or whatever if they don't it's it's obvious if they don't understand this concept of how to blend things together blend sound together to make it sound natural uh because it sounds very unnatural it's as if like it's like when you get like a an echo like of the same sound source and you hear the same person talking over themselves like it sounds weird um so we're trying to actually make it sound a little more natural with these with these edits um, but I think we're going to save compression for a later time because that was an hour and a half on, you know, a couple measures of music, but this is, um, an interesting way of doing it where I'm kind of like, it's like, um, playing battleship with audio production, <laughs> like three Hertz to D two miss. You know, my body <laughs> but yeah, I guess, I guess we can, uh, we can call it an episode, huh? What do you sounds, say? Sounds good to me. All Thanks right. For helping. Of course. All right. So long, everybody. Bye. Bye.